the next point. We should ensure that whatever we see is clear. That means work is being done and we can see that it is in opposite direction. Students, welcome to another session of the radio television e-learning. I'm Mrs. Comfort Bakau, taking you on Christian religious studies. The senior section, the senior secondary section, SS classes. Our topic for today is Joshua as a leader. Joshua as a leader. We have our texts. Quite a number of them. Numbers chapter 13, verses 16 to 33. We have numbers also 14, chapter 14, verses 1 to 10. And then the same numbers, chapter 27, verses 15 to 23. Then we have Joshua, chapter 1, verses 1 to 15. And the whole of Joshua, chapter 6, all of it. And then Joshua, chapter 24. 1 to 31. These are our texts. Our next heading, the role of Joshua in the story of the 12 spies. We want to start by saying, I want to start by saying that we've been looking at leadership. And in our previous lessons, you remember we've looked at uh, Moses as a leader. And Moses we said he was the one that God sent to bring the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt. We've looked at that in our previous lessons. And now we've come to Joshua. And we are saying Moses did not take the children of Israel into the promised land. They are still moving from, the, from Egypt, going to the promised land, Canaan. They've crossed the Red Sea. Moses had led them to cross the Red Sea. After they crossed the Red Sea, there were some movements, but there, as they came to a point, Joshua sent some men to go and uh, check, if you want to, or to spy on the land that they are going to. That is the promised land. He sent 12 spies to go and look at the land, see how the land is. Is it a good land? How are the people? And all of that. Then they should bring report to him. Amongst the 12 that Moses sent was Joshua, the son of Nun. They were instructed, he said, to find out whether they could be able to conquer the land or not. So when the spies came back, the majority report presented by 10 of the 12 spies dismayed the people and they wish they could go back. What did the ten say? They said that, yes, we've gone to the land. Yes, the land is beautiful. Yes, see the grapes. We've even brought some of the fruits of the land. But that there are giants in the land. And as we stand beside the giants, we seem like, like grasshoppers beside them. So the people were dismayed. They were discouraged. In fact, they wanted to stone Moses and Aaron. He said, why did you bring us out to this place so that we die here with our children and our wives? It would have been better for you to leave us in Egypt, in our land of bondage, than to come here and die. So we are saying the people were discouraged, wanted to stone Moses, and they wished they could go back to Egypt. But then Joshua and Caleb presented the minority report. And what was their report? Their report was that was a favorable one, that although the people did not believe, I mean, though it was a favorable one, the people did not believe them. That is the Israelites. What did they say? In their report, they say that the land in which they had spied was a very good land, though there are giants in the land. Yes, they accepted the fact that there were giants in the land. It was a good one. And if, since the Lord is with them, they will be able to capture the land. So Joshua warned the people not to rebel against the Lord. Because rebelling against 
Moses is as good as rebelling against the Lord. So they strengthen the people, or he strengthened the people, and encouraged them that the Canaanites would be like food to them, since God is with them. So with this encouragement, the people were able to now move on. They don't go back again to the, they don't, want, they don't wish to go back to Egypt, the land of bondage. We are looking at the background of Joshua. Who is Joshua before we come to his leadership? Yes. So the commissioning of Joshua. Moses was growing old, Moses prayed to the Lord to appoint a leader to replace him. And God now instructed Moses to take Joshua, the son of Nun, a man in whom was the spirit of leadership, and lay his hand upon him. Then he should let him stand before the Eleazar, the priest, and the entire congregation. He commissioned Joshua in their presence, and then invest in him some of his authority, so that all the congregation of Israel would obey him. Yes, that was the instruction of God to Moses. Moses was growing old. He had led them into the wilderness. But as time go on, went on, he was now growing old. So he asked the Lord, choose someone that will replace me, that will take the people to the promised land. And God said to him, take Joshua the son of Nun, in whom the Spirit of God. And you remember, we've just finished saying he was one of the twelve that was sent to spy the land of Canaan. And he was the one that brought good report to the people and encouraged the hearts of the people. So who else would take over from Moses other than Joshua? So God said, appoint Joshua. And so Moses did exactly as the Lord commanded him, and Joshua took over the leadership of, or the mantle of leadership from Joshua. So Joshua takes over the leadership of Israel. And we find our text in Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 to 15. We say, shortly after the death of Moses, the Lord called Joshua and assured him of victory and success in his leadership assignments. He further advised Joshua on the way he should go, walk in order to have good success. God told Joshua, I read the text of what God said to Joshua, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do according to all that is written in it, for then you shall make your way prosperous, and then shall have good success. You find that in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. This was what God instructed Joshua. The book of the law, if you are going to have good success in leading these people into the promised land, then you have to meditate. You read the word, meditate on it day and night. You know, my students, there are different ways in which people succeed. People succeed in different ways. But this one, God is saying good success. You can succeed, but in a bad way. But for Joshua, God was giving him the secret of good success. The word of God is what will give him good success. Okay, so God instructed Joshua on his new assignment, which was leading the people of Israel across River Jordan to take possession of the land. He said the, the, the city of Jericho had been shut up from within because of the people of Israel. Nobody came in and none went out of the city. Yes, because of the fear of the people of Israel, people around have heard the news of the children of Israel. They've heard the news of their crossing the Red Sea, how God has been fighting their battles for them, and all of that. So Jericho is a city, or was a city, very big, 
I mean, it had big and mighty walls, firmly built, that before you can enter the promised land, you have to, if you must enter the promised land, you have to now fight and defeat that place. So Joshua, like Moses, his predecessor, he sent two spies to spy the land of Jericho, to spy the city of Jericho. Two spies. Moses sent 12. Joshua is sending two. The two men went into the city to look at how the land is or how the city is, how are the people, will they be able to capture them, will they be able to defeat them, all of that. So that they can also bring reports to him, Joshua, so that they will know what to do. The two spies went, and as they entered the city, they went to a house of a lady called Rahab. And the men of the city saw these two men going into the house of Rahab. The Bible always refers to her, or she's been referred to as the harlot, Rahab the harlot. Whatever it is, you will see how God used her later in the story. So as they went, I said the men of the city saw the two spies that Joshua sent. And so they went to the woman. After some time, the king said that she should now bring out these men that entered, I mean, came to, your, to the house. She answered and said, yes, of a truth, two men came to my house. But as it was getting late, or dark, the men had left. They've left her house and they've gone. Follow them, pursue them. Maybe you catch them or you will meet them on the way, the bush. Meanwhile, what has she done? The men are right in her house, in the roof. She has hit them for safety. She has hit the men so that they will not be killed. Because I'm sure she knows who her people she know maybe if they see strangers, they will come looking for them. And so the men, they said, yes. I mean, they came, but they left, followed them, or pursued them, and they did. And when the men had gone a long distance, Rahab now asked the spies to come, and she instructed them on what to do. You will now try to go the other way. But then, as I've done you good, as I've spared your lives, we know that God is with you. Your God, we've all had the story. All the cities around, they've had your story. And we know that, I know that definitely we are going to capture this city. But when you come, when you eventually come, remember me. Remember to do me favor. Because I've done you good. You too should do me good. Remember to spare my life and the life of my family. The main, the two spies said, okay, we will do that. On the condition that all your family members, wherever they are, your parents, your brothers, all that of your family members, they should come to your house and do what? And stay in the house. And then there's going to be a what? A rope. Red rope that you tie to the wall that you will put down and we will see it as a mark that this is your house. And when we see that, we will not destroy that, and we will now come in for you. Okay, so that was the story of the two spies into Jericho. They returned and gave the report to Joshua. Meanwhile, God has done what? He has given Joshua a master plan, a strategy on how he will now capture or conquer the city of Jericho. I've told you, the city of Jericho, the walls, I don't know, you can just imagine it, a very mighty wall that two 
I mean, cars, in those days, they, are, they were using chariots, right? Chariots can move on top of the wall to show you how wide the city was. And people's houses could be within the wall, hmm? the city wall. Fence, fence, it's a fence, but it's a very wide fence, very big, made of stone, strong, all in process to protect the cities and the life of the people against enemy attack. So that was how strong Jericho was. But God now gave Joshua a master plan for the capture of Jericho, which was fully obeyed by him, Joshua. He said, it all started with a procession hmm, of armed men of war. So God said to Joshua, you are not going to use military arms. You choose men of war. They will stand at the front of the procession, followed by several men, several men holding what? Trumpets made of horns, the ram's horns. And then this Men will also be followed by priests, some priests carrying the ark of the Lord. And again, behind those priests, there will be another guard of armed men. They will go around the city, this procession now. They will go around the city once, the city of Jericho, once every day. Then you come back to the camp. You will not say anything, you will not do anything, you will not touch the wall, you will not do anything. Just march around the city once, come back to the camp and rest for the night. The next day, you will do the same. You do that for six days of the week. And on the seventh day, you will march and do the same procession, but you do it six times. On the seventh time of the marching around the city now, Joshua will give a command, and the ram hole will be blown, and people will shout, and then the walls of Jericho will come down crumbling. And that was exactly what happened. The people obeyed Joshua's instructions. They did the marching for all those days, and on the seventh day, seventh time, and on the seventh time, the walls of Jericho came falling down flat. Okay, so as soon as the people had the trumpet, they raised a great shout and the wall fell down flat. As you can see on the screen. The conquest of Jericho, the picture is there. Those of you watching on television, you can see the picture. Mighty wall. You can see the people with the ram horn blowing their trumpets. You can see the amen. You can see the Ark of the Lord over there, the priests carrying the Ark of the Lord and the walls of Jericho. We said, see the walls crumbling. Rahab's place or Rahab's portion would have been standing because we said she had promised or the spies had promised they would spare her life because she also spared their life when they came into the city. And so they would have spared Rahab's life with her family. And so Joshua instructed them, go into the city, pick all the precious things, the silver, the gold, and all, but destroy every other thing. Destroy all the people, male, female, all, all. But bring out these precious things because it will be used for the Lord's work. Okay. So that was the conquest of Egypt, I mean of Jericho, and as they entered into the promised land, because with other fights, they were eventually in the promised land. And Joshua was able to do what? To share or to divide this, the, the, the promised land to the different tribes of Israel. He was able to settle them as the Lord has promised. We are saying Joshua was the one that eventually brought the children of Israel into the promised land. Moses brought them out of Egypt, but did not bring them into the land, promised land. It's Joshua that was able to. With him, 
trusting God and obeying God's instructions, as we've seen in the capture of Jericho, the conquest of Jericho, walking by faith, trusting God for everything. He was able to do that. Okay, so before Joshua died, he now called the people of Israel together. He said, Joshua rededicates the Israelites to the service of God. We find that in Joshua chapter 24, verses 1 to 31. When Joshua was about to die, like Moses, he rededicated the people to the service of God. And the people promised never to serve any other God. Joshua made a covenant with them to keep the laws of God, the statutes and the ordinances. And after this, Joshua wrote everything down in the book of the law of God. He died at the age of 110 years. Okay. In rededicating the people to the Lord, Joshua, Joshua was able to tell them, take them through history, how that God has been faithful to them, how God had led them through fighting their battles for them. And so him, Joshua, and his household, he said, he will serve the Lord for all the remaining days of his life. He asked the people to choose who they will want to serve. Is it the gods of their fathers? Or is it the God that brought them out into the, to the promised land? And the people promise they will serve the true and the living God. Joshua's leadership qualities. There are so many qualities in Joshua that we can learn from. We said Joshua had absolute faith and trust in God. Yes, as you see, so, he was a man of courage, not given to fear. Joshua possessed wisdom to stop riots. He possessed the ability to learn from his master, Moses, by sending two spies into Jericho. Remember? He was a man who, was, who followed God's instructions. He was very obedient. Lessons to learn. There are many lessons we can learn from this story. Number one, Christians are expected to walk by faith and not by sight. As seen in Joshua and his colleague who went to spy Canaan, the others made their report based on the physical appearance of the people they saw. But, Joshua, but Joshua's report was based on faith and confidence in the omnipotent and the power of God. Number two, Joshua trusted the Lord and followed the instruction of God. That was why he succeeded. Number three, Josh, I mean Christians should always study the word of God, meditate on it, and obey the instructions, and their ways will be prosperous, just as God told Joshua in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. Then we say God is always ready to fight for his people. He will trust him in, at all times. The emphasis is on trust. Let's trust God always. And God uses people no matter their conditions. Remember example, Rahab. I say they always call her Rahab the harlot, but God used her. And you will see, you read your Bible, she became one of the grandmothers of, one of the grandmothers of Jesus. Next. Before I go, my students, I have assignment for you. Assignment number 1A. Say why and how Joshua succeeded Moses as a leader. Number one B, mention any four leadership qualities you see in Joshua. Question two A, discuss fully the conquest of Jericho. Two B, question two B, mention any four lessons you have learned from this topic. I take the assignments again. Number one A, Say why and how Joshua succeeded Moses as a leader. Number one B, mention any four leadership qualities you see in Joshua. Question two A, discuss fully the conquest of Jericho. And question two B, mention any four lessons you have learned from this topic that we've just finished. Our references Always, number one, the Holy Bible. 
If you have your Holy Bible, you are okay. But there are other supplementary ones. We say the Holy Bible, the versions NIV, RSV. Easier for you students, the reading or the English is easier for you to understand. Number two, comprehensive Christian religious knowledge for senior secondary schools by Martin's I. Amechi. Number three, round up Christian religious knowledge by A.E. Zochuku, V.C. Ama, and A.A. Adeinka. My name is Comfort K. Bakau. My contact number 080-226-6767. In case you have any questions or your assignments, you want to send them, you can use the number. I take the number again, 080-226-6767. Stay safe, keep learning. Till we meet the next lesson, remain blessed.